Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is a continuation of a July garden tour where I'm just doing a very, very detailed walk of the entire landscape. This is in Raleigh, North Carolina. It's on uh, two tenths of an acre, very urban, very urban space. I've created a playlist just for these July garden tours. I'm going to link it up here in the corner if you're watching on YouTube. And uh, uh, I don't know if you've missed one or not. This will be number three, four, five. This is number seven, and I think it's going to end up being nine because there's so many so many different uh, uh, plants in this landscape. Uh, so let's get started on today's. Uh, this uh, Grand Cascade butterfly bush was planted on this bed edge because I've got lots of pollinator plants around the bed edge of this piece of turf in the back and in the uh, front garden space. It has definitely outgrown this space. Um, it's a beautiful plant, uh, blooms like mad, pollinators love it, but I've got to move it back a little bit further in the bed. So this winter when it goes dormant, uh, I'll cut it back and, and move it more toward the center of the bed. So I'm trying to get a center piece through this bed that, uh, that creates a little bit of mystery for what's on the other side of the bed. There's actually a path back there and I, want, I don't want people to easily be able to see all the plants that are back there. So this belongs in the middle section uh, as kind of a little bit of a screen. Uh, another plant that's back here that's working properly uh, as a screen is the uh, white wedding hydrangeas. There's three of them back here and the butterfly bush is doing a good job of of, of blocking them off. Uh, Hurricane Elsa or, or Tropical Storm Elsa kind of laid them flat this year. This is what happens on some of these new um, varieties of uh, hydrangeas with these just giant uh, inflorescences, the, the big white group of, of flower, flower-like parts. Uh, the water gets on them and they can be weighted down some. Um, it doesn't happen every year, but this year we did happen a five inch rain event uh, that caused that, but <laughs> they still look great. And they bloom for so long. White wedding is a great variety. It's super compact. I haven't had to prune these at all uh, since, they've been, since they've been in the ground. If we come around to the other side of the uh, Grand Cascade uh, butterfly bush, there are a couple Leucanthemum here, or Shasta daisies. This one's called Real Charmer. Uh, look at the amount of yellow that's in this variety. It starts out uh, very yellow, uh, like this, and then slowly but surely gets whiter and whiter. Uh, great plants, super low maintenance, easy. Um, you know, that's a kind of a plant and forget uh, sort of perennial. The bed edge continuing along this way is lined with Angelonia. I've got Angelonia in several different spaces in the yard. I notice in the morning that I really don't see pollinators uh, on the Angelonia. Right now they're on some salvia that you'll see in a minute. Um, seems to be later in the day that the Angelonia becomes one of their favorites. One thing that's interesting um, about the Angelonia, I talked about this with the Pentas in the last video, is how little maintenance these actually are. They're, they were pruned one time. Uh, when they were put in the ground, they were lightly pr tip pruned so that they would fill out and get bushier like they have. And then these flower spikes last so long that you really don't have to come back in here and do uh, hardly any maintenance at all on Angelonia. I highly recommend this as an annual flower uh, just because you can plant it and forget it. Uh, the, so honestly, the soil that's been put in here along the bed edge is just in my mulched bed. Um, there was some compost originally added, but uh, it wasn't it wasn't overly prepped and it's only been fertilized one time so uh, you know again angelonia i highly recommend for your for your annual pro, uh, annual summer flowering projects um, the, there's three azaleas along the front uh, right here that are uh, this is autumn star uh, autumn sunburst uh, these are encore azaleas they're budding back up to bloom again and uh, it won't be long before i start to see some more color on these uh, this one has, uh, it's kind of a pinkish uh, color with a, uh, with, with, a, with a white edge, but the white edge is slightly smaller than this new one called Autumn Starburst, which I have two of behind it. Uh, I think the two of these actually look great together. Uh, Starburst has a, has a, the white band on the flower is uh, bigger. So they have variegated flowers. That's what I'm trying to say. There's five Encore Azaleas in this space. Uh, and they bloom for a very, very long time. They bloomed for weeks and weeks and weeks in the spring, and again, they're butted up, ready to bloom again. Just little evergreen, low doming things. I gotta have, I have so many uh, flowering perennials and annuals in this landscape that I gotta have something that's just 
green. <laughs> so that in January, something is out here. And so these fit the bill perfectly, plus they bloom multiple times a year. So uh, kind, of a perfect, uh, kind of a perfect selection uh, for that. Uh, to my right, uh, this is a, a dwarf Joe pie weed. I showed, uh, if you watched the, I think the third video from the uh, front garden space, I showed the, uh, the uh, regular uh, Joe pie weed, which was over my head in the front yard. It's over six feet tall. This one has, nothing's been done to it all season and it's right at three feet in height. Uh, every one of the, uh, every bit of the growth has flowers on it and there's a bee sleeping right here on the back of that one. Uh, we can see right there, and once these flowers open, they have not op they're just starting to open. Uh, if you've never seen what happens on Joe Pie Weed when the flowers are completely open, um, they just absolutely go wild for them. Uh, uh, to, to the right of it is a viburnum. This is a native viburnum called Viburnum nudum. The flowers were here earlier in the season. It's actually grown a foot and a half. This thing was bought in a one quart pot and was, uh, was maybe, uh, maybe 12 inches tall, something like that, or less, and it's grown this much in a year and a half. Again, here's where it had flowered, and then this is the, uh, there were berries uh, where the flowers had formed. I think the, uh, the birds have probably made off with the majority of them uh, at this point, but that's the, that's the reason that I plant these things uh, in the landscape, because the flowers are great for the pollinators, the, the uh, berries are great for the, uh, um, for the birds. Uh, there's some terrenia planted down here below. I've got annuals planted here and there. Uh, we'll do the back path uh, on the uh, next uh, tour video. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of stick to the, uh, you know, to the larger things down the middle, the middle of this bed uh, for now. This uh, tree right here is Cyananthus retusus or Chinese fringe tree. But this variety is called Tokyo Tower, kind of the appropriate uh, plant for this week with the uh, Tokyo Olympics going on. This is a fastidiate uh, Chinese fringe tree, so it grows very vertical. And uh, you can see all the growth that's happened on it since I planted it. It was about this tall when I planted it last year, and it's you know six and a half feet now. There's a few limbs down here at the bottom that I'll eventually take off and clean the trunk up uh, just a bit, but it blooms just like regular uh, Chinese fringe tree or um, uh, slightly different than a native. There's a native fringe tree uh, as well, but this one fits my little two tenths of an acre lot because uh, it's up, upright and narrow, which you know I need on a lot of plants. You'll see lots of plants that are selected because they're, they're very upright uh, and you know, ver very vertical. There's a hydrangea that went in here. This, is, uh, this one has not been released. It's a hybrid. Uh, hydrangea, white flowering hydrangea called Princess Bride. Um, I think this is going to be a great selling plant. I will eventually do a video on this, um, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, this is going to be a uh, this is going to be a big introduction uh, coming up from the Southern Living Plant Collection. Uh, the abelia uh, right here is called um, uh, Miss Lemon. Uh, this is um, I talk about these variegated abelia all the time. They're such great landscape additions. Uh, there's a bee, bee sleeping on this one here as well. Uh, there's such great additions to the garden, uh, but the flowers don't really show up. This thing's blooming like mad, and uh, I think if you stood back, you wouldn't know that it was actually flowering, but the bees are all over it. Um, they absolutely love the flowers on these abelia. This is another thing that's planted here, so something looks, so something looks the same uh, year-round. Um, it's just a, a great little low-doming, uh, evergreen, variegated plant it also has the side benefit of blooming and attracting pollinators to the landscape. Behind the hydrangea, there is uh, some Sahara uh, rudbeckia or black-eyed Susans. Uh, this one starts out kind of a, a bright, pretty bright yellow color, and then it um, uh, you can get shades of rust colors. Uh, you, we'll, we'll see that when we get to the other side of the red bud over here. Some of these come back for me and some don't, uh, but I can do these from seed every year. They're really pretty easy and, and bloom in the first season. The uh, pollinators love the fl open flowers and then the birds uh, love the uh, seeds on them. So I leave the, uh, leave the flowers on them uh, for the birds later in the season. I've got giant marigolds uh, back here that I did from seed. I showed some in the last video. I've got a rabbit problem and the rabbits are so into <laughs> these giant marigolds. I have no idea, but 
did I strip the foliage off the entire bottom and make them kind of uh, make them kind of floppy? I just broke I just broke this one. Um, you can see how just kind of floppy these are. It was laying right here on this uh, on this gardenia, but um, you can see out in this space for whatever reason they like to go into that circle and eat the marigolds. They haven't really killed uh, hardly any of them. Um, they're still there. They could come back out of it um, if I can get the rabbit situation under control. But they're actually actually spraying. Um, uh, rabbit <laughs> rabbit spray on them and they still they just can't get enough of these marigolds for some reason i have no idea i have no idea why uh, the gardenia that's in this space is called diamond spire uh, this is an upright uh, narrow growing gardenia uh, buddy lee introduced same person did all the encore azaleas it bloomed heavily in the spring and now here we are in july and you can see uh, how many flower buds this thing actually has. I'm probably a week away from it ba being back in full, full flower again. Super interesting foliage, super interesting growth habit. Grows like no other uh, gardenia that I have ever seen. So uh, really, really interesting. Of course, uh, uh, evergreen and then fragrant flowers as well. There's a container kind of hidden back here that uh, actually needs a little bit of work. It's got some alyssum in it that were, was done from seed some nasturtiums that were done from seed, and then it has a variegated boxwood. The um, uh, marigold is not part of it, but, but it looks kind of nice in the, uh, over top of the, uh, the variegated boxwood. This variegated boxwood I'm turning into a two-ball uh, topiary. Uh, still working on that. Moving back out here to the uh, bed edge, uh, there's several more agapanthus planted uh, in this space. I think Almost every one of these tour videos has included agapanthus. I have lots of different varieties, some smaller growing, some larger growing, some that are barely hardy here and some that are very hardy here. But uh, I do love agapanthus. Uh, the uh, bees, you know, absolutely love them. Uh, they're constantly, they're constantly digging around in them. Uh, there's one uh, on that purple flower there, pretty much. Uh, two flies on the top of it as well. But uh, there's always, always, always pollinator activity around uh, all of these uh, agapanthus. Uh, this uh, salvia here is called Love and Wishes. Uh, it's um, kind of a wine color. Got the beautiful calyxes, uh, like I've been talking about, the part that holds the uh, flower. Uh, this is a hummingbird favorite uh, for sure and a bee favorite. Uh, they work this one pretty much all day. This variety can get pretty big and it's um, likely an annual here for me, but they're worth buying. Um, you know, I can generally speaking get one of these for four or five dollars and nothing's going to outperform it uh, during the summertime. Uh, it, th this thing will just, it never stops flowering through the entire summer. Perhaps the biggest performer uh, in the garden, um, uh, kind of just planted these for the first time mid to late summer last year and then um, um, kind of had to seek them out uh, this season. Uh, this is Summer Jewels White and Summer Jewels Pink Salvia. And um, you can see from this video that in my, my question and answer videos, I've been putting the chair right here just so people could see all of this action behind me. Uh, this thing just grows like crazy. You can cut these in half <laughs> once every two weeks if you want to. Uh, and uh, they just keep coming back out of it, keep flowering, keep flowering, and the bees just go crazy. And it's pretty much sun up to sun down. It almost looks like th these are just moving. Uh, the, the, there's so many bees on them uh, all day long, which is just kind of fun to watch. This is a great little spot in the garden just to come and just and just watch. Uh, but those are uh, summer jewels white and uh, summer jewels pink. Uh, let's see. Uh, behind it, there is a container, a low container that has mint in it. Uh, so I do. I am growing some mint, but I keep it in a container. It's not really decorative in any way, so it's just kind of hidden back there. But if I if I want mint, um, it is here. But again, don't put your mint in the ground because it will uh, it'll go crazy. Uh, behind the uh, summer jewels salvia are some Everillo Carex. This gold um, grass. I've got a few weeds. I got a few weeds here uh, that have popped up in this. We'll get take care of that while we're filming. Uh, there's three Everillo Carex. Uh, just beautiful um, gold additions. Once the uh, salvia dies back to the ground in the fall, these will be the uh, winter standout uh, in the garden. There's a verbena banariensis here. This one was done from seed last year, uh, and uh, but it's a big performer in the garden. Gets powdery mildew. 
down in the middle of it. It just does. Uh, I don't care. Uh, it never stops blooming. The uh, pollinators are on it all day long. The uh, hummingbirds come and sample the flowers. As the seed matures on it, I've got, um, uh, I got goldfinches taking the seed. So a plant that's just kind of offering something uh, all day long. There is a very buried, uh, a very buried Laura Petalum back here. Again, this will be another winter standout uh, in the landscape. This is Purple Daydream. I got a bee on my ear. Uh, uh, a Laura Petalum called Purple Daydream. It's a dwarf, only gets about two feet tall, but about as wide as you'll ever want it to get. Again, it's going to look great in my winter garden with some pansies planted in front of it. Uh, for now, it's taken second fiddle to this, uh, this stand of, uh, of salvia. Uh, let's see, what else we got? <laughs> Probably one of my top questions on this channel is if I have this red salvia behind me in any video, it's what's that red plant, what's that red plant? This is saucy red salvia. This is a Southern Living Plant Collection one. Definitely, um, most likely an annual marginally hardy here in my area, but I'm just going to treat it as an annual, try to find it uh, each season. Again, it's a Southern Living Plant Collection one. It blooms this bright red all season long, and it's never a time that hummingbirds not coming over here, and uh, and uh, other than when I'm out here disturbing them, uh, and the bees are on them all day long. The celosia that's planted around the edge is that fresh look celosia. And this was a mix. It's got the orange and the yellow and that reddish um, color. Those are, uh, got, got, there's hardly anything easier. And again, the bees absolutely love, love that celosia. There's some uh, spilanthes uh, in this spot. This is a, uh, it's some people call these toothache plants. Uh, great performer in the garden, really. I actually got these by accident. I mean, I knew what they were, but uh, I didn't, I don't know that I meant to put them on the cart. But they've looked, they've done, they perform great uh, in the garden. There's some medicinal purpose for that plant in India, uh, I believe. But just a great flowering addition uh, in the garden. And then there's some kufia planted out here on the edge. These are mainly here for the uh, for the hummingbirds. Again, I think there's four or five varieties of kufia in the landscape uh, this year. But these will perform great right up through October. Um, and uh, right up until the hummingbirds are leaving. So I slid a little further back in the bed and I'm gonna wrap the video up right here with these last five or six things. One thing I'd like to point out is there's a celosia uh, in this spot that is a uh, volunteer. Uh, these things will seed themselves, just letting you know if you use celosia, it will return the next year. And uh, I've got it where it's come up in a few spots and I've left it in other spots where I've, uh, where I've pulled it out like it was a weed but sometimes it comes up in just the perfect spot. Uh, that one, probably not so much. It'll, it'll end up being eliminated, but uh, in the front garden space, I've got several uh, that are just going, you know, they came up, they came up on their own, they look great. This shrub in front of me is called, uh, this is a Laura Petalum. This is a green foliage Laura Petalum. Most of the Laura Petalum, uh, the other two varieties that you've seen in the landscape are, have purple leaves. This one has green leaves and it has white flowers and it's a dwarf. This is a dwarf uh, white flowering. Laura Petalum, again, it's called Emerald Snow. It's actually about to um, get a few flowers on it. It actually has one that's um, kind of open there. It's a, that's just kind of a small version of a flower on these. Uh, they have those uh, frilly flowers that, uh, you know, are typical to all Laura Petalum, but they're white on a green plant. Again, this is one of those things that's in the landscape to make sure that in the winter time, it looks like something uh, out here. There's butterfly weed planted in several places. Uh, I had it in the front yard. I've got it here. Uh, I've got them behind me in, uh, with more flowers on them. This one's budded back up. It's got the seed pods here. Uh, there's no more life <laughs> that you can uh, invite into your garden uh, than using uh, butterfly weed. You get the pollinators. You get, um, you know, you'll eventually, I'll eventually have the monarch butterflies on here. There's just so much life that you bring into a garden. Um, with uh, any uh, with the Sclepius, uh, this is a Sclepius tuberosa. Uh, there's a lantana uh, planted here that's called Ham and Eggs. Uh, this one will go absolutely wild in a single season. Uh, I'll have to cut it a couple times before the end of the season, but uh, nothing blooms more or heavier than this one. This one is considered hardy in my area, but sometimes they don't come back uh, in the first year. If it comes back for the first time. 
uh, it'll always come back. That's what I've always found with these uh, marginal uh, lantana. If I can get them back one time, they'll come back every year. Uh, there's more of the uh, kufia planted uh, in a spot here. That little corner just kind of repeats itself um, from the kufia to the uh, uh, spilanthes um, to the um, celosia, and then um, again back to the spilanthes and and the kufia. Um, that's how that, that that's how that corner is supposed to be. Last plant I'll point out um, is this dwarf pittosporum, which is doing exactly what I wanted it to do in this space, which was again give me something uh, low, compact, evergreen, and unchanging. Uh, this one will flower in the spring uh, when it matures a little bit. The dwarfs pittosporum are a little slower to, to flower or present flat flowers. They are fragrant. Again, not really growing it for the fragrant flowers that they get. Just this perfect little low dome uh, in the midst of all the other chaos uh, that, is, uh, that is this bed, honestly. I'm going to pick up and head this direction uh, in the uh, next video and along the back path. And I don't think I've really ever shown the back path before it's really the most incomplete area uh, of the landscape but we'll see it in the next video thank you guys for following along with these uh, don't forget to uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, again i put all of these videos into a playlist if you want to go back and catch up thanks for watching